So these are blankets and sheets Wait. and some, Pop. some clothes. I have that quilt and I thrifted it in Georgia where Stranger Things is filmed. It's the same quilt. It is so beautiful. Perhaps yeah. making a jacket out of it and maybe using one of these big details on the back. I don't know if I have the heart to cut into it yet. Let's make a quilt coat. Welcome to step time. Like and subscribe. All right, first step to any project, we are cutting out our fabric. So I'm using a thrifted quilt here and it had this beautiful scalloped edge. So instead of cutting out the edge from the fabric, I just used the already finished edge of the quilt and that's on Big Brain Energy. And I suggest you do the same if your quilt has a fun edge. All right, now I'm threading my machine and I'm attaching the front bodice pieces to the back bodice at the shoulder seam. Now I think I used a 5 8 inch seam allowance here because I'm going to cut out all that bulk in the middle and do a flat felled seam here. The reason I decided to do a flat felled seam is because I'm not doing a liner and I wanted all of the seams to be beautiful inside and out. And yes, my nails look absolutely hideous, but please ignore them because the flat felled seam is the star here and it looks so good. So that's how I'm making my insides beautiful. All right, so a quick update. I attached the front and back shoulder seams together. So this is it right side out. It's looking pretty cute. That's the exact shape I wanted. So I'm excited to see it on. It'll be pretty cropped. I think I'm gonna put like big star pockets cause that's the, one of the big details. I have a star on each sleeve, but I kind of want a star pocket as well. I also on the inside, as you guys saw, did some flat felled seam with a quilt. Got your leg. The actual quilt, the lining and then the batting on the inside so at each seam you're gonna have six layers so I cut a lot of that bulk down and then I was able to fold one of the outside lining pieces in to do a flat felt seam it's looking good I think it's gonna be really cute um, it will overlap and have buttons but I like that you can just kind of wear it like this and it's scallopy I'm working on the collar right now instead of doing two of my main fabric for the collar I did outer piece in a lining fabric because it will get really bulky if you do two of the quilt so right now I feel like I'm like I don't know I'm it's giving me like straight jacket vibes but oh well okay good update all right and on to assembling the collar as you heard me say before, I used a liner as well as a quilt piece so that it wasn't super bulky and I could get those corners really popping out. So I <laughs> graded my seam allowance, poked out the corners, and it turned out super cute. Gave it a good press because half of sewing is pressing and if you're not pressing, what are you doing? And then we're slapping that baby right onto the neck hole opening. I'm just pinning it all the way around. We're just gonna sew this and we're gonna add bias binding later. Then you give your jacket a little hug and then you sew down. The hug was for good luck. I don't know, I don't make up the rules, okay? And you're going to want to take this very slowly. Make sure you get a nice curve. You're using lots of pins. And then after all of this work, you're going to realize, oops, I lost thread bobbin war chicken. And what I meant to say was bobbin chicken. I lost bobbin chicken and I was very sad about it. So I just loaded a new bobbin in there, got back to work, just did the work again, it's fine. And then when we are done with this, we're gonna add some bias binding. Now I chose this lovely green color and I bias bound the whole thing. It was super gorgina. And it encompasses all of those raw edges which we love. Fold it down and then we're gonna stitch it again. And of course, after we spend a lot of time pinning it down to make sure it is perfect. Just take your time at the very edge because this is the part of the jacket that's gonna be most visible when it's open. So you're just gonna wanna take your time. And this is also a great time to add in a tag. So 
what I like to do is kind of mark the center and then add it in right before I sew it. That way it doesn't get all shifted around. And then you sew it in there and then you have a beautiful tag in your jacket, which I love. And that is how it's looking. I did a very good job doing the bias binding. And now it is time for the sleeves. So we're gonna attach the sleeves the same way. This whole jacket is constructed by attaching everything, sewing everything, grading all the seams, and either doing a bias bound seam or doing flat felled seams. So here I am meticulously clipping and sewing the shoulder seams together. Wow, gorgeous. And with this one, I decided to do a flat felled seam. So we're doing the exact same thing. And here's maybe a little bit more in detail. We're gonna grade that seam allowance. We're gonna cut down all that bulk in the middle there. Then we're gonna take one of those long pieces, fold it over, pin it in, and then we're gonna sew along that edge. And I really like the seam finish. And yes, it took one, actual billion of pins so you know take your time with it it's gonna look nice if you do it'll it'll pay off if you take the time to uh, do lots of pins check that out it is so pretty okay this is what it's looking like so far the bias binding on this I don't know if I'm in love with it, so I might change it out. However, the rest is looking pretty cute. I got this side seam to kind of match up, but this one is not so good, but it's okay. I just kind of wanted to go with the scalloped design, so I didn't want to sacrifice that. So I actually ended up adding like an inch to the back, an inch to the collar. So overall, it's like a... um bigger fit but I'm not mad at it um yeah as I talked about before I think I'm gonna add like a star pocket here so I can have somewhere to like put my hands but overall um I like the design placement I did on the sleeves it's like one big star on each of the sleeves so I got I still have to finish or put bias binding on the seam on the inside so basically after I finished the shoulder seams the flat felled seams, which I'm really excited about how the inside looks because it looks really nice. After I finished this, I just clipped all the way down the sleeve and the side and just sewed that. So I still need to finish this with bias binding. Anyways, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna continue and then we can do fun stuff like adding the pockets and buttons. So <sighs> I just ordered food. It'll be here soon. So that'd be a good break, as it is 8.40 p.m. All right, I made my bias tape. Um, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and bind the side seams as well as redo the neck hole, I think, because this will look way better. There's also like a ton of cat hair on it, if you can see, but we love a little flair in our projects. This is literally so much better. So glad I did that. I also changed out the tag to one that says, you're a good egg. Way happier with it already. So now I'm gonna <laughs> do the same thing to the arm seam. Listen, I just wanna like take my time with this piece. Sometimes I do tend to like rush through or do like the fast option, like using my serger. But with this, I just kind of wanted like to honor the quilt a little bit. Like somebody took their time and effort to put love into that. So I want to kind of honor it with like putting love into this. So <laughs> here's the reality of shooting all of this myself. Um, my kind editor, AKA my husband left that in for you guys to see. And now we are just closing up the, what am I doing here? What the heck am I doing here? Oh, LOL. I was attaching the bias binding. It was just on the other side, so you couldn't see it. So now I'm trimming down the seam allowances and grading those seams to make sure that when I turn my bias binding over, it will be able to fold. So this is gonna take forever, but you're just gonna wanna take your time to 
fold that over, pin it down, fold it over, pin it down, fold it over, pin it down, because you don't want any gaps when you sew this down. So take your time with the pinning and it will pay off. Um, if your machine is like mine, it's probably going to jam at the beginning and end of every like <laughs> one of these because it can't handle three layers of fabric. However, the result is quite cute. Oh yeah, that's nice. Right. So how I decided to finish the sleeve hem was to do some bias binding and then fold it to the inside. Um, it's kind of like a small opening, so you kind of just have to go slow and take your time. As you can see here. Oh, there's my pocket. And these were actually cutouts from when I was cutting out my actual pattern pieces. And they were already kind of ruined, as you can tell. Ooh, ooh, she. <laughs> they already had some stuff cut into them. So I decided to use these ones as the pocket because they were already going to have to be, you know, repurposed in some way. So I separated the batting from the quilt. And I separated the quilt top from the quilt uh, bottom. And then I decided, how do I want this pocket to look? And I ended up taking off like two of the little diamonds so it had an opening for my hand. So I'm just kind of uh, seam ripping that off of here. And the way I decided to do this in hindsight, I would have just left myself a lot more seam allowance because I, it was pretty scant the way I ended up having to do it. But I attached the lining right sides together with the quilt top and I sewed around the edge and then turned it inside out and poked out all the edges. And as you can see here, I had to hand sew some of it back down because the seam allowance was so scant, it definitely didn't pick up all of the edges. So I just hand sewed down whatever was left, but it's all right. It's honestly, this is for the pocket. So I'm gonna be stitching it to the jacket anyways, but I just wanted it to look nice and last through the washer. So then I'm placing my little pockets on the jacket and realizing how freaking cute this looked. This is probably one of my best design choices to date and it just fits so perfectly. So I'm pinning that down, making sure that it is even with the other side. And then I'm sewing them, attaching them to the jacket, if you will. Leaving that little hand opening open, back stitching at both ends. And this kind of did take a while because I was like, turn, 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 turn. But worth it in the end, I say. But as it took me a very long time to do this, we can just sit here together and hang out while I sew this. Are you guys uh, having a good day? Are you eating anything, drinking anything? I'm drinking tea currently. I lit a candle. And um, anyways, back to the jacket, I suppose. This is what it looks like. And I especially love this because I can stick all my fingers in little diamonds and it is super extra fun. I can put like a little treat in each one. However, here's how it turned out. Voila, that is it. We've made our quilt coat. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something. I hope that this inspired you to maybe upcycle a blank that you find into a wonderful quilt coat to keep you warm all the time. And until next time, keep cool, have a great day, and uh, toodaloo and hugs all around. <laughs>